Okay, so we are going to start today's lecture with, uh, let's say a case study. Look at a specific case and try to figure out what a solution to that scenario might be. So start with uh, ISLM model. So Y, R, mm, we have LM here, we have ice here, and that means that we have equilibrium here. Okay. Now we bring in the Phillips curve. So Y here, and over here we're measuring phi T minus minus one, which is the change in inflation. Uh, okay, so I'm, go I'm going to do this a little bit differently. Why here? Okay. So why not here? And so suppose uh, this is what the Phillips curve looks like. So we are at this point right now. So at this point, obviously, what we can see is that pi t minus pi t minus one is less than zero. So what effectively means is we have a deflation. Okay. Now, what we want is for us to arrive at this point, which is the equilibrium. Now, what is interesting is that, remember when we have talked about the zero lower bound of interests, interest can't be less than 0%, nominal interest, and as a result, monetary policy at times become powerless to influence the economy. So suppose that this point is zero. Okay, don't need to do that. This point is zero. Okay. And so we have minus one, minus two, whatever. Interest rate can't be in this region negative region, right? So the lowest uh, that we can be, uh, let me just redraw this better. So this is zero. So this is the lowest that the government can reduce the interest rate. And if they do that, So we're still at this point. We have increased the output, fine, Y1, Y1. But the problem has not been solved, right? We are at this point, and at this point, price level is still decreasing. Over here, inflation is less than inflation, which means basically, Eventually, we're going to get into a place of deflation. What we also have, since we have reached the zero lower bound, we cannot reduce interest rate anymore, which means we cannot increase Y anymore, which means output stagnates, output cannot increase anymore. We are stuck at this level of output. And so that's a bad situation for the government. First of all, price is going down, which is bad. Second of all, output has stagnated. And in this situation, there is nothing that the central bank can do because we've effectively entered a liquidity trap situation 
where monetary policy is no longer effective. What can we do here? Maybe we can uh, undertake some sort of fiscal policy that increases the IS. And so it, uh, suppose, shifts the ice curve here. How can we do that? Well, we can, uh, I suppose we can increase Y by increasing G if government expenditure is going up or if taxation is going down, that's going to stimulate the economy. And once we have done that effectively, we arrive at this point. At this point, of course, pi t equals to pi t minus one, which is inflation is, uh, what do you call it? Inflation is constant. So this is just one of the examples of, uh, of, of situation where just one policy may not be enough and we will need a combination of policies to fix these problems. So also let's look at another problem. Uh, right now, common debate internationally seems to be taxation, and some people want there to be a higher tax. And also, let's take a look at what happens in that situation. So now let's assume that the economy is in an equilibrium. Okay. So. Doesn't look nice. We have the Phillips curve and this level of output. So suppose we also have this is nice. This is LM. This is the interest rate. So this is where we are in the economy. Now suppose the government wants to increase taxation. Okay. So in case you don't remember, let's just go through this. Y is equal to C plus I plus G. And C is a function of Y and T. Y positively, T negatively. So if T goes up, what that's going to mean is that C is going to go down and as a result, y is going to go down. And if y goes down, remember the ice curve is a function of i, y, and a few other things positively. So if the government increases tax, the ice curve is going to shift to the left. I may have rushed through the explanation right there, but we've, we've done this in chapter four and five. So hopefully it wasn't too difficult for you guys to follow. So as a result of this, what you see is two things. Because of a rise in tax, what is going to happen is first of all, output falls, this basically, we go from this point to this point. Also what is going to happen is, uh, just give me a minute here. Oh, yes, the next thing that is going to happen is remember that investment is a function of interest rate and output. Output has fallen. If output falls, investment falls. And what else happened? We have arrived at this point where 
we have caused inflation. Inflation occurs because we're at a point where pi t is more than pi t minus one. So see now, at the first glance, this looks like a very bad policy. What we've done is increased tax, and as a result, the economy has entered a recession, investment has fallen, we have inflation, prices are going up, and overall we're in a bad situation. However, the important thing to realize here is that this is just a short-run phenomenon. As we said, this is going to happen for a period of time, but sooner or later, a central bank is going to react. Now, why the central bank does not react immediately? There's a nice write-up given in the book. You guys can take a look at it. But effectively, the reason central bank can't react immediately is because initially they just have to wait and see what's happening in the economy. Once they see what's happening, they have to figure out why it's happening. They have to devise a policy to solve it. They have to put it into effect. And every economic policy takes some time to, you know, taking effect. It's not like you implement a policy today and you see results immediately from tomorrow. So there are lag periods. And so central banks can't really react immediately or can't change economic, uh, certain economic facts immediately. Things take time, but sooner or later, central bank is going to react. And what they can do is lower the interest rate. If we do this, if we go to this point, intersecting here, we are intersecting here. So what happens is that in the short run, tax causes recession. But in the medium run, this can be solved by the central bank. So oftentimes when you see two economists uh, arguing about certain economic uh, facts and what the outcome of a policy will happen, the argument often stems from the fact that they're focusing on different timelines. If you are focused on the immediate few weeks and few months, you may say taxation is a very bad thing because the moment you have tax output in the economy is going to fall, inflation is going to go up, investment is going to fall, and there's no way you can defend that policy. However, if you want to look at a longer time period, you want to look at one year, two year period, then you see that this doesn't have to be the case because over time, output can go back to the original level, inflation can be stabilized, and investment, obviously, uh, if output is going up, so once again, if output is going up, then investment will go up again as well. So all the problems can be solved in the medium run.